in this section, we're going to talk about the theoretical um, linear regression model. And again, this is all going to be very theoretical, and then we'll learn about the actual practical part of it. Okay, so if we have two continuous variables that have a linear relationship, we could use this linear model where we say y is going to be equal to some beta 0 plus beta 1 x. Now this is just a basic line. If you remember from your math classes, y equals mx plus b, where this is your slope and this is your y-intercept. The reason they change it to is like beta 0 and beta 1 is because then they could actually add in lots more variables and you could have like beta 2 x 2, beta 3 x 3. Etc. So you can have a multiple regression model, but we don't do that in this class. But they still have beta 0 and beta 1. So let's just make ourselves a note. This is beta. And down below we have this sign. This is called epsilon. Those are our nice Greek letters for the day. Now in a perfect world with no outside influences, you'd have the exact line y equals your intercept plus your slope times x. But we don't live in a perfect world, and data points rarely fall exactly on a line. So our simple linear regression model is, we'll do yi equals beta 0 plus beta 1 xi plus epsilon i. So basically, this is your line, and this is your error. So yi is the observed value of your dependent response variable, and xi is the specific value of your explanatory or independent x variable. Beta 0 is your intercept parameter. Now what this means is this would be the average value of y when x is 0. So just like up here, b is when x is 0, what is y? The intercept is necessary to help us identify the line, but it doesn't usually give us practical information. Beta 1 is the slope parameter. So beta 1 represents the change in the average of y for every one unit increase in x. Basically that's just saying slope equals rise over run. That should be familiar from your other classes. Or you can think of it as the change in y over the change in x. That's all that it's saying. Now, as long as your slope's not zero, then that tells you that x and y are linearly associated or somehow correlated. And epsilon i is the error term. That tells you how far each point is from the line. So the important thing to remember is the error is how far your point is from the line. And you can find the variance of all of your different error terms, and that's the way for us to measure how close our data points actually are to the line. Now some theory about our error terms that you probably won't really remember is that the error terms are supposed to be independent. That means that one point should not affect the other point. And the error terms are supposed to come from a normal distribution with a mean of zero and an error variance, which we'll call sigma squared, just the variance of all the errors. And if we know that, then we can find some things about the y values. Since our independent error terms come from a normal distribution, then our y values should be independent y values from this normal distribution, where the mean or the expected value should just be what point you'd calculate for the line and then you have the variance of the error terms. So again, the expected value for your y value would just be what the line should be, and the variance is the variance of your error terms. So we'll try this out, see what that actually means to us. So crickets make their chirping sounds by rapidly sliding one wing over the other. The faster they move their wings, the higher the chirping sound that's produced. Scientists have noticed that crickets move their wings faster in warm temperatures than in cold temperatures. Therefore, it's possible to use cricket chirps per second to find the temperature of the air. Chirps per second and the temperature can be related through this following equation, y equals 26.346 plus 3.24x, with error terms distributed as a normal distribution with a mean of 0, variance of 0.94. So when you look at this nice scatter plot, you can see that the points are very close to the line. Okay. That's nice. That's telling us it's a very linear relationship. Also, my slope is going up, so it's a positive association. So let's write down some of the things that they told us here. The equation of the line is 26.346 plus 3.24x. Okay. That means this is my intercept, or we call that beta 0 in this class. 
and 3.24 is my slope, which we'll call beta 1. And then it told me my error terms are going to be normally distributed with a 0 and 0.94. And so this is the variance is 0.94, so the standard deviation would be the square root of 0.94. So first, what would be your expected temperature when the crickets are chirping 20 chirps per second? This is basically saying x is 20, and what, it's asking us, what is y? What would we expect y to be if they're chirping at 20 chirps per second? Well, all you're doing for this, if you know x and you want to know y, you just plug it in the line. equation in the line. So y is going to equal 26.346 plus 3.24 times x, which is 20, and this gives me 91.46. Now you guys should be used to this. I like to interpret everything we do. So if they are chirping at 20 chirps per second, we expect an average temperature of 91.146 degrees, or 91.46 degrees. Now why do we say an average temperature? Because from day to day it's going to vary a little bit. Every time they chirp 20 chirps per second, it's not going to be exactly 91 degrees. But if we went through and we found all the different times they chirp 20 chirps per second over a few months, found the, the temperature each time and took the average, it should be about 91.46. Now this one says, how much does the expected value of the dependent variable change, dependent means y, when the explanatory variable increases by 1? It's just asking you to find the slope. Slope equals 3.24, so there's my slope, 3.24. What does this mean as interpretation? This is saying, so if chirps go up by 1, we would expect temperature to go up by about 3.24. Now again, this is all just kind of based on average or about. It's not going to be exact because this is real life. Now with that in mind, it says how much does the expected value of the dependent variable change when the chirps per second increases by 3? So this is saying if x goes up by 3, how much does y increase? So to calculate that, we'd say, well, every time x goes up 1, y goes up 3.24 for my slope. So if I, x goes up 3, y should go up 3 times 3.24 or 9.72. If the chirps per second is 0, what's the expected temperature? So this is saying if x equals 0, what is y? Or in other words, it's saying find the y-intercept. So come back up to our equation. We said our intercept is 26.346 degrees. So if our charge per second is 0, the expected temperature is 26.346. This last one probably seems a little bit less intuitive but it's still something that it's possible for us to do. Okay, it says, what is the probability that the temperature is below 70 when crickets are chirping at 14 chirps per second? So first of all, there's a few things to think about. So if x equals 14, what should y be? Or what do you expect for y? To do this, let's just plug it into the line. So y equals once again, it's 26.346 plus 3.24. 26.346 plus 3.24 times our 14. So this is 71.706. So if x is 14, we expect y to be 71.706. Okay. Let's see. If we were trying to find a probability, now you know that 
these Y values are supposed to be normally distributed. So it's supposed to be normal. The expected value is what we just found here. So the mean for the Y value or the expected value is what we just found here is 71.706. And I set the mean for my Y for that specific value. You also need to know for a normal distribution what the variance should be or a standard deviation. We wrote that up here. The standard deviation should be 0.9 square root of 0.94. And to find a Z value, you do what your actual value is in our cases, our YI, minus the mean over the standard deviation. So it seems a little bit different, but we found done this variation of z just over and over and over again. Okay. Anytime you want probability with a normal distribution, it's the value you're interested in minus the expected value over standard deviation. So in our case, z, they're interested in is the temperature below 70. So to 70 minus our expected value, which is 71.706 over the square root of 0.94. which equals negative 1.76. So we're going to come in here and draw our picture. So here's my negative 1.76. And I want the probability or the area to the left. So I pulled up my normal table and I want the area to the left of negative 1.76. Looks like we're at 0 0.0392. So 0 0.0392. So what does this mean? This means for 14 turns per second, we expect 71.706 degrees. But we know it's not going to be exactly that. It could be a little bit higher, it could be a little bit lower. Specifically, there is a 3.92% chance that it is less than 70 degrees. That's not very high, so that means we really should be getting pretty close to the 71.706 degrees. We don't seem to have a lot of variation here. Or our standard deviation, if you will, is pretty small.